It's called Conversation with the CEO. It's now time for another edition of Conversation with the CEO. And I love this show because if, I, if I'm the smartest in the room, I've got a problem. And that's the reason why we do this show, so we can talk with people a lot smarter than I am. We're trying to learn. We're trying to grow. That's what it's all about here at the Lynchpin Bunch, Inc. And we're just excited about it. So I've got someone with us today. Let me just say this about him. He goes way back in terms of just success. He was a dentist who got into the music business and made a lot of noise. He founded one of the top gospel recording artists that there is, and he's still doing his thing even to this day, Mr. John P. Key. He has also gotten into the film business and worked with some collaborations with none other than Deidre Haddon on a great group of films. So, ladies and gentlemen, we can learn a lot from this CEO. He is the CEO of Ty Scott Music and Film. It's none other than Dr. Leonard Scott. How you doing there, Doc? Doing good, man. How's it going? <laughs> oh, great, man. <laughs> it's, I mean, let me tell you something. I'm excited by having you on the show because we can learn a lot. Um, you've got a, I think your business started way back in the 70s, correct? Yes, record company, 76. I started in dentistry in 73. So, you, so 73 is dentistry. And let me just ask you this. You were a dentist. Like, it doesn't make sense to me. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm just being too hard. But it doesn't make sense to me that a dentist it, working on someone's grill turns around and says, I want to do a music. I want to do some music. <laughs> <laughs> Especially back in that time. And you, you were competing against a, a lot of people because you were an independent company, right? Right. <clears throat> so what made you take on such a big challenge like that to go up against the big boys and just say, you know what? I, I, I think I could do this. You know, I'm a dentist, yeah. but I, I know music. Talk to me, Doc. Well, it did, didn't really work that way. Uh, it's really the thing is, a lot of times the big boys don't want to take the little stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and so the little boys have to start something so they can get their stuff out there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so so if, the, if the big boys it took me on, I probably wouldn't have never started, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so they so so they told you no, and you said no. I'm gonna do this anyway. <laughs> well, yeah, and and it really started out just as a record for our our church choir, and um, I thought that was it, but uh, God had other things in plan, and we, uh, other artists began to come to us wanting to use our label, and that's sort of how we kind of launched out um, by helping other independent artists uh, you know, get an exposure and promotion. Now, in this time, in, in 2021, after a pandemic, you're considered a big boy yourself at this point. Um, we're, we're, how, we're, how, we're, how do you, how do you, what, what do you take in, in this season of owning a, a, a record label uh, when uh, there's so much new stuff going on? Like there's a fight over content like never before. Um, more and more artists are wanting to be independent. And, and you kind of have the footprint of independency. Do, do, do you, does, does this play a role in helping you to help, I guess, mentor younger artists, younger companies? Well, I've got a lot of information, man. And things have changed so much since when we first began, like, wow, 40-something 40, 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been, been a lot of changes in the industry, man. When, when I started, it was vinyl, you know. And and if you go back far enough, you know, before Edison got the talking machine, it was mm -hmm. it was print. You know, music was print. Um, mm -hmm. It was live and print. You know, somebody singing on a piano. Um, you wanted to hear some music, you either had to go to the club or to the church. You know, uh, oh, the only way you could hear music back then. There was no recorded music. You know, it was it was yeah. all live. You know, um, wow. and then when he created this talking machine, um, records, recordings came on. And that, that changed everything because now you have something physical that can talk back to you, and that nobody has to sit down and play it from a piece of paper. It's like, yeah, you can just play it yourself and hear it. And, and so, uh, but you couldn't reproduce it. You know, somebody had to press that up. But then when tapes came along, 
Um, and I, everybody, what the word was is this is going to destroy everything because now people don't have to buy this piece of plastic. They can just tape it off the radio and, you know, there goes our sales. Yeah. But it didn't happen that way, even though, because after they tape it so many times, the sound, sound is so bad, you know. Yeah, yeah, it loses that great quality. It, yeah. Isn't that interesting that it seemed like every year or you know, so often when something new was invented, uh, the end of the record industry almost took it as a threat. Yeah. But it yeah. seems like it still hasn't happened. There, There seems to be this this new thing where every, like it, it just finds a way to still be consistent. Like music is so important now. And I think artists can make more money off music now than they ever have been able to. Probably so. It, it, the internet changed everything again, man. Um, and you, before you were kind of limited to if you were in America, you were limited to your audience in America. You know, a few people got overseas, but not a lot, you know. And a few people from overseas got over here. But now with the internet, everybody is everywhere. You know, you you, you can have people listening to you in Japan, China, uh, Africa, every continent. Um, wow. You know, it's, it's, it's limitless. And so that, that ex expands your audience to... Um, what before would have been very difficult, you know, to get that kind of uh, exposure. I mean, worldwide exposure. Um, so yeah, well, it's, what's what's the biggest shock to you that the internet has done for your business personally? So, with Ty Scott, music and film, what's that thing like you didn't expect it, and it just became huge and 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 literally surprised you how much success you garnered from it. Ah, there's so many, so many things that, that I could say uh, about that. Uh, again, the, the exposure that, you know, it offers, the internet offers, but then record companies have, like in, back in the day, in order for you to discover an artist, you basically had to go to a club or a church or somewhere or to see the artists, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. you could hear them on a recording or something, but you want to see what they look like, not only what they sound like. Mm -hmm. Well, now with the internet and YouTube, you know, Vivo, you just, you can sit in your, and, and a lot of record companies, I understand this is what they do. They don't go out no more and send out scouts. They bring a computer in, see who got a million hits, you know, just pull them up, mm. see what they look like and what they sound like. And, mm. and, and if it's something that they're interested in, they seek them out, you know. Uh, but let me ask you this, though. Ken, looking at it that way, right, looking at it by the million hits and, and listening to music, can, can a record label get, you know, there's a new term called scam. Can, you know, it's been around for years, but they now have it in the music. They call it scam music. And... Uh, there's an artist, he tricked a record label into a $10 million deal and he scammed them into it. He, he, uh, he created something that looked bigger than what it was. Um, and that's how and he's a guy out of Detroit. I can't think of his name. I think it's BX six or something like that, but, uh, a, a whole record label signed this guy based on <laughs> certain things. He, he made, he did a, he did a pretend arrest, uh, -huh. He did it. He, so he went and did a, a concert and they wanted to see him live. So while he was at the live, he paid some guys to come and arrest him while he was in the middle of his performance to make a big thing. The word spread all around town and everybody was discussing this guy, made his music even hotter, got all the record labels fighting over him when he never actually even went to prison. He never even got arrested for real. It was a scam. <laughs> Seriously? This, this is this really happened. Wow. And he really got a $10 million deal. He got a $10 million deal. He has a lot of followers and, and, and um, you know, he does some music called scam music. But I, you made you brought that up to my mind when you said that's what um, labels are doing now. They got to be careful out here. These these young people know how to scam now. They learned it way better than we probably ever thought it could be. Well, you you, you remember Millie Vanilli or whatever it was called. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
yeah, yeah. So, so, so scams have always been here and scams will always be here, you know. It's, yeah. uh, they ain't going away. It just, it just <laughs> comes with it just comes with the business, huh? Yeah, you're gonna have dishonest people, man, regardless. They're gonna find a way to be dishonest. How, speaking of dishonest, how have you been able to keep your credibility so long? There's I, I never hear anything about Dr. Leonard Scott other than great things. Like no one, I've never heard anyone say, man, I wouldn't work with Ty Scott. It's almost as if you just have an impeccable, you know, support and 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 uh image of of just what you do. Inte- integrity is very important in our company. It's part of our our uh platform is uh you know and if you know if we if we can't have integrity, you know, it's really we don't want to do it. Um and you know we, we say that uh Jesus Christ is the chairman of our board. Mm-hmm. So, he, you know, makes sense to me that <laughs> he keeps the board in order, you know? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. So let, let's uh, let's talk about the, the transitioning of where I feel like. Film companies such as yourself seem to have a lot more opportunities because content has truly become a major piece of a lot of companies making changes. AT&T just uh, took their Warner label of uh, filming wise, HBO Max, and they're combining with Discovery and all their products. Disney just bought Hulu, you know, uh, and took all their stuff, all their Disney to make Disney Plus, right? Viacom and CBS, you know, all the, all the same. It's only a few people. It's almost like, Everything's being owned by three or four people, but everybody needs to buy content now. Right. How has this this need for content uh, changed film for you and your business? Well, it's certainly um, given us more doors, you know, to which it has to everybody because because of the need of content. It's a little easier now to to uh, shop what you have because there's so many places to shop it to. Um, and then of course you, you, you want to shop it to the big boys because that's where the major dollars are. But if, if, if it doesn't hit with the big boys, there's some middle guys in there that you still get a pretty good deal, you know? And so uh, it's, it's been, I'll tell you, this whole thing has kind of leveled the playing field uh, back in the day. You, you pretty much couldn't get anything done unless you were hooked up with one of the major uh, film studios. Uh, but that's not like that today, you know, and, and uh, you know, Tyler per- Perry has been a great uh, example of, of what can happen, you know, uh, yeah. independently without, you know, having a Warner or, you know, one of the big film studios now uh, all of them are, fil- are filming at his studio, you know. Every time right. you, see, you, see that, you see that big old Georgia peach at the end, you be like, they did that at Tyler Perry studio. That's amazing to me, like that turnaround yeah. uh, in terms of, you know, a guy who went to Hollywood, got overlooked, did it on his own, and now Hollywood goes through him. Yeah. Like, it's a lot of major things recorded in that studio. Have you even been to that studio yet? No, no, I haven't. Okay. Well, I, I probably I, need to go just to you probably. Just yeah, to, you need to go see that. Yeah. Tell me about it. I, I, I can't really tell you much about it. I ain't been there myself, but, oh, I, you but I've heard. <laughs> OK, but I've heard I've heard the you know, I've got friends who've been. And okay. let me tell you, they, they they talked about it for days. So I know it's amazing and I'm going to go eventually. But, uh, you know, you have you have a film company. So I I, I, def, I definitely think you should be checking it out because yeah. it seems like seen anything. Pictures. Yeah. Are you working on any films at all? Uh, right now, I think we're doing something with another thing with Dietrich, which is actually okay. a, uh, a TV series. So not okay. as a feature film, but, you know, a series. Oh, well, what is it about? It's it's more about about I don't know if you uh, saw the uh, Blessed and Cursed uh, yeah, film that I, we did. I, on I him. did. I did see that. And so there was some interest in that um, 
from different networks uh, about that being a series, you know. So that's sure. sort of where we're going with it. Wow. Wow. I mean, but Dr. Scott, there was so much pulling at you, and and, and I'm, I'm sure people are pitching you ideas and saying, hey, I got a film, I've got the next big artist. You know, what, so if someone's watching this and they would really want to work with Ty Scott, uh, music and film, what would really actually get your attention? Uh, well, of course, talent, you know, that's, that's a no brainer. Uh, but then a lot of people have talent, a lot of people have talent. So some, also some business acumen, um, that can really, you can have somebody tremendously talented, but don't know how to take care of business and okay. you can have a disaster, man, major disaster. Okay. So, um, that's, that's a major part of it. And we talked about integrity, you know, we're looking for people that, you know, not trying to beat somebody or not trying to. Uh, get over, uh, uh, but walking in integrity, um, and uh, and also from our company, even ministry. Um, you know, we we basically deal with gospel products, and so um, if 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 possible, we want the people that we support. Um, you know, at least. <laughs> Trying to have some kind of morality, huh? <laughs> now, you want them to, you want them to try to at least live a live a decent life. <laughs> yeah, and, and we know nobody's perfect. You know, don't, yeah. don't get me wrong. Everybody on our label not angels. You know, floating around. <laughs> Let me ask you that. Let's let's talk about that for a minute. So, when it comes to like you know your business is, is a gospel record label, right? Right. But you've had the success of any type of record label, really, but. How does that sometimes become an issue for you where you've got artists known for gospel and but yet they're regular people who have regular problems, who go through the same kind of challenges in life that anybody, whether you're a hip hop artist, a country singer, a gospel singer, they all have regular issues. Right. How I has that people. challenged your company because you do represent a uh, gospel music? It, you know, it can be a challenge because sometimes I think people expect more out of gospel people than they do out of regular people, which gospel people are just regular people who found Jesus, you know, <laughs> so, yeah, but, yeah. but still have problems, still have issues, still have things going on in, the, in their lives, you know, um, and, uh, but when people expect more out of you than uh, they don't expect you to, you know, say, well, you're supposed to be saved, you know. Like, well, you know, saved people have problems, too. It's, you yeah. know, saved people make mistakes. I mean, you know, it's yeah. like, and so it's not that you make a mistake, we're going to kick you to the curb. But it's a thing that when you just say, well, I don't believe in God, you know. Well, you know, that, hmm, you know. Or, a little bit different there. <laughs> yeah, or I don't care. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a wife and a girlfriend on the side, do what I want to do, you know, and just in your yeah. face, you know, like. Then that's that's another issue, you know. That's another issue. Uh, so, so let me ask you this: If what, people like Kanye West and 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 uh, P Diddy Combs, who now calls himself Love, uh, when guys like that start getting into the gospel music world, right? They want to do gospel, which he did, right? He created the choir, traveled around, did the Sunday morning services. You know about those things. The, the, does that help your business? If Kirk Franklin does a song with Lil Baby, right, uh, does that help what you do? Or how do you feel about that? You know, I, I used to have mixed emotions, but, man, I, when people would say, you know, this guy goes on the Grammys and, you know, he's in his song, he cussing every other word. And then he gets a Grammy and he comes up, first thing he says is, praise God for this. You know? <laughs> and I used to have issues with that, but the, the Lord dealt with me, man, and, okay. and brought me to that scripture that says, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. And it didn't say every saved thing. It didn't say every holy thing. 
It said, said everything. Everything. <laughs> hey, come and on so, now. Nah. So I, I came to the realization they just doing what they supposed to do. They supposed to praise God. Doesn't matter how they living. They everything supposed to praise God. And so um, to to you know they came to Jesus one time and told him you know Jesus there's some people over there they're not part of us but they're over there casting out demons and they over there preaching in your name. And, it, it's, and they was talking about Jesus. Stop them. Jesus said, I ain't stopping them. Say they doing the work. Let them go. You know? And so here's the deal. Any way the gospel can get out there. You know, I, I am not against it. I'm for it. You know, that, and the more people that hear music that glorifies our God, you know, the more people hopefully that are going to be touched and somebody is going to come to the Lord. Wow. OK. Well, I appreciate you sharing that now. You're a CEO of a company. So I want you to give some advice to people who want to be CEOs, young people particularly. What would you suggest to them to make sure that uh, they can be as successful as you've been? Wow. Uh, that's a good question, man. You know, a lot of businesses don't make it. And um, and, and we've gone through some things where we, we uh, probably shouldn't have made it, but our uh, chairman of the board, uh, stepped in and brought All us right through. Now. <laughs> Come on now. I, I'll let you preach if you want to now, but I know you're <laughs> pastor, so go for it. Yeah. But, you know, I, you know, I don't want to sound, you know, too religious or too, um, but I believe that all of us have a calling on our lives, that all of us have a purpose and a big part of success in our lives is finding our purpose and walking in it. Um, sometimes um, we're not successful, not because you know we we have a lot of hard licks and, and bad things happen, but it's because we really don't know if we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. Uh, wow. If if you if you are assured and know this is what you're supposed to be doing, it doesn't matter what happens. You know, it doesn't matter what comes against you um, because, you know, this is where I'm supposed to be. When you don't know that, then you have doubt of like, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Um, maybe I'm not doing the right thing. You know, maybe I need to be doing something else. And so when you have doubts like that, you know, it's hard to really stay on a given path. Uh, gotcha. But, but once wow. you know of a certainty that this is what I'm supposed to be doing, it doesn't matter. I don't know if you know the story of Joseph or not in the Bible. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm familiar with that. His brothers one. sold him into, into slavery and he got lied on. But he knew he had a dream. You know, he had a dream before Martin Luther King Jr. had a dream. <laughs> I know that's <laughs> right. Come on now. He said, I'm going to be a ruler. You know, that, look at my dream. I had two of them. You know? And his brothers got jealous of him and, and seemed like everything came to block him. But in the end, it happened just like the dream he had. And he never lost track of his dream. Um, wow. And so when you know, uh, with all assurity, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, and, you know, we had some things with the record company. Um, when we started the record company, it, it was it was a more of a hobby. Than, than a real okay. business, you know. Um, okay. The, the dental office re was really paying for everything. And I remember meeting with my accountant every every year. Um, and, you know, he'd go through, we had a number of little different businesses, you know, and every day, every time, you know, he'd get to the record company and he'd say, nah, you know, you need to shut this down. This is draining everything else. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I would wow. tell him, you know, I, 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 I I love, you know, I love to do this. He was a golfer. You know, I tell him, you golf, you know, you spend thousands of dollars golfing. You know, yeah, I, I like gospel music, you know, and he just shake his head and say, well, whatever, you know, but but there came a point when my, my firstborn son was going to go to school and be a dentist. He had already been accepted in, in uh, the next class dental uh, class. And over the summer, he came to me and said, Dad, he said, the Lord told me to help you with the record company. And I was like, you know, the record company ain't making no money. You know, dentistry is doing good, you know. <laughs> and, but but he said, that's what the Lord told him. And so I said, yeah, I ain't gonna box with God. And so he 
uh, didn't go to dental school. He wow. now he had already been working, you know, in the company. But at this point, it's like a different shift now. Like um, this is going to be his livelihood. But but when that happened, things started turning around, and it became more, you know, than just a hobby. Um, and so. I know John P. Key made a big difference, didn't he? <laughs> John P. Key made a great. Now he was, you know, he was the one. And there's a story behind that too, man. Talk, right? Tell us the story. So, so <laughs> go on, tell us the story. How did John P. Key end up on the label and making this label one of the one of the successful gospel labels? Period. So here, here's the deal. During, during this time, we had a, a guy in Detroit that was doing A and R for us, and and he called me on a Saturday morning and told me that, man, we got this demo tape. Well, you know how long that was. It was a demo tape he had. Yeah. And he said, he said, listen to it and started playing it because I'm in Indianapolis, he's in Detroit. He starts playing this demo tape and uh, it's a Saturday morning. I'm in bed, you know, I hadn't got up yet. And he plays the song, he said, what do you think about it? I said, it's nice, you know, he played, listen to this one. He played another one, man. He did, and I said, man, just go on and sign him, you know? <laughs> and so, <laughs> And and that's how it happened. And I talked, you know, John told me later on, man, you know, a couple of years later, he said that, he said, you know, these other record companies come to me and say, why didn't I send them that demo tape? And he said, I did. He said, I sent them to all of them. I sent that same tape to every company out there. Wow. Y'all the only one that responded. And, you know, I, and, and I get it because record companies get tons of demo tapes, are used to. I can't say that now because it's a whole different scenario now. But but John, you know, but when he, when we signed him, he was just another new artist. You know, a lot of times you look at, at artists now that that are established and whatnot, and you think, well, they just overnight, you know, it was hard breaking him. It's hard breaking uh, any new artist. Just be for real. Because okay. what you're coming up against are you're coming against the established artist. And there's only so many spots on radio, you know records to be played the established artists are going to get played because they already have a fan base you know um and so a new artist coming on nobody knows them you know it's just it's hard to get them in there uh but if they got the goods and once you get them in there then it's gonna happen and then they're gonna become one of the established artists you know <laughs> um and so that's sort of what happened but let me share this with you man come so, on give us all the good juicy stuff we love it at the time uh our distributor, the the, the uh, president of the distributing company, you know, who distributed our records everywhere, mm -hmm. and John was a new artist, brand new. But we had an artist that had got a Grammy nomination on his first recording, mm -hmm. and so, uh, you know, when the distributor, you know, we'd have our meetings with the distributor, he asked you, you know, what you got coming out and everything, and and so, you know, we told him, well, we got this new artist that we think has got some potential. And you know John Key, and um, and then you know of course we got other artists we had. And he looked at me and he said, "Now I don't know who these other artists are, and I don't know who this John Key is, but you need to take everything you have, forget them, and put it into this artist who just got this Grammy nomination on his first recording." He said, "Artists don't get Grammy nominations on their first recordings." He wow. said, put everything you have into him. Forget these other artists. And, you know, what he said, and he was, you know, he was an industry guru, you know. Mm -hmm. And what he said made natural sense. But uh, one thing we do, we pray about stuff. Come on, Doc. And now now, now the, the, the industry guru said, take everything and you have and put it in him. But the chairman of the board said, uh, Put it in John Key. <laughs> <laughs> I know you. I know you're glad you made that decision. I, I'm glad we got a chairman of the board. Come on who now, sees beyond what we see. <laughs> uh, you know, it's it's funny and that you bring that up because when it comes to business, a lot of people sometimes they they separate the God portion of the business. And they go, I, I, business is business. You know, I don't want to come off crazy because I'm telling somebody that the Lord told me to do something. But it seems to me a lot of successful businesses, they do value the prayer, the 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 consulting God, you know, 
consulting, the pastor, you know, those kinds of things. That kind of matters to a lot of business people. Ex- talk about that for a minute. And and you've said it. I mean, the Bible says uh, there's safety in the multitude of counselors. You know, mm-hmm. um, just just make sure you're counseling with the right people, and 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 then also make sure that you are willing to accept uh, that counsel. Uh, and um, you know, you you've heard stories about people that young young lady hooks up with a guy and. And everybody's telling her he ain't right for you. Mama tell her he ain't right for you. Sister tell her you ain't right for you. No, you just jealous. You just want him. You know? No, I don't want him. You know? it's like, <laughs> but and 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 then you know she gets hooked up and gets locked in and finds out that everybody was right. You know, and she should have just gone on and done. Um, and and then another level is that of that is when, on a spiritual level, is when you you know when God is talking to you, and that is. You know, a lot of people really don't understand that they have a spiritual side. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times these voices they hear talking to them, not audible voices. I ain't, I ain't talking about being crazy, you know, like. Yeah. You talking about when they say the universe. Yeah, they right. Say, yeah. <laughs> they don't say God, they say the universe. Right. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, God speaks to us. He talks to us. And and I tell you what, if you're about to do something and, and you know it's wrong, and a voice talks to you and says, don't do that, you know? That's probably God, or one of his angels, or maybe it's your conscience, you know? Cause maybe your mama taught you you shouldn't be doing that, you know? Yeah. Um, but then if there's another voice telling you, yeah, go on and do it, you know? <laughs> Ain't nobody gonna know. <laughs> Even though you know it's wrong, you know you shouldn't do that. That's probably the devil talking to you. Or it might be your flesh. Just because yeah. you know in you you want to do it, yeah. and so you have to you have to make sure you're listening to the right voice because because the wrong voice will destroy you, whereas the right voice might not make you feel good now, but in the end you're gonna find out that's the one you should have been listening to, and wow. and you're gonna be very grateful if you listen and and obey that voice. Well, doc, Dr. Scott, man, I appreciate spending this time. This is a great conversation. I, I really think this is going to enhance somebody and help them grow. He's a CEO of Ty Scott Music and Film, Dr. Leonard Scott, and uh, been in, in the music business, in the business as a, as a dentist since 1973. There's a lot of wisdom here. Uh, a lot we we can learn and uh, a lot we've already learned from you. And we appreciate that. You have a book coming out of here. You want to share that with the people? Yes, yes. I, I have a book that uh, my third book that I wrote is called um, The Ultimate Boost from Within 31 Days to Health, Wealth, Wholeness and Happiness. And it, it really came out at a good time with all this uh, COVID-19 um, because it's about um, it's about health. And not just physical health, it's also about mental health and emotional health and uh, social health, your relationships, financial health, every, every aspect of your life. Um, and, the, you know, it talks about not only talks about you know, exercise and diet, and those things, but uh, just life, how you carry out your life in order to to be uh, truly successful. You know, a lot of times we say success and first thing people think about is money, you know, how much money they got. But there have been some people with goo gobs of money that are very unsuccessful. And I say that because you're not a success if you want to take your life, if you want to take your own life, if you're always walking around depressed or whatever. It doesn't matter how much money you have, you know. Yeah. If, if, you, if other parts of your life are not together, you know, you have no relationships with anybody. Nobody wants to be around you, you know. Um, that's not success, you know. Um, every, every every part of you needs to be at a level of health, of healing, and so that's what that's what the book is about. And uh, actually, at Amazon right now, it's, it's on sale. The uh, ebook two ninety nine. Uh, okay. The regular book I think sells for twenty or something like that. But uh, okay. yeah, it's helped a lot of people. I've had some some pastors that uh, have told me, and I didn't even know they they called me and told me. They, they showed, sent me a picture of them 
and said, your book did this, you know, wow. like where, they, where they lost a whole lot of weight and stuff. Because it's not, it's really, I tell you, a lot of things we think are really hard, they're really not. Yeah. They're really not. It's, it's, you take baby steps, learn how to take baby steps. And in, in the book, a physician, I, I interviewed a whole lot of people. And, and a, a young man who was the, he was actually the state health uh, commissioner at the time. And he was telling me, he said, people fail because they try to do too much too fast. He said, when I, when I, when I try to get my patients to stop smoking, he said, I don't tell them to don't smoke no cigarettes no more. I tell them to smoke one less cigarette a day, one less. And then and one less than that. And then you know, he said, just take baby steps and you can get it done. But when you try to you know, do it too fast and too quick, and, and that's what it is. We need to, moderation is the key, moderation. So, wow. yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time. How can people get in contact with you for any reason? Maybe they uh, just maybe want to contact you for mentorship. Um, yeah. how, how can they reach out to you? Man, I'd love, I'd love to do that. You know what? I'm in a season of my life right now where I'm doing just that. I'm mentoring uh, young people in, in the music business and uh, in other areas in ministry. And uh, my website, come to my website. It's bishoplscott.com. It's bishoplscott.com. And you can reach me through there. It's got an uh, email address. And I'd, I'd be delighted to, uh, to share and to yeah praise God yeah. Man, thank you for your time I, I definitely appreciate you for sharing those nuggets that you gave to us today and uh, ladies and gentlemen there you go that's Dr. Leonard Scott he is the CEO of Ty Scott Music and Films and I'm, I'm going to tell you this he ain't finished yet he's still working now remember in all you do make sure you're still trying to learn and and, and get some new information so you can grow because if you're not growing you're dying